Hello and welcome to the new video on uh, static analysis of uh, comp student competition car hub. Uh, in earlier two videos, we have discussed about the static uh, analysis of uh, competition car upright, and we have looked into the static analysis as well as the fatigue analysis of the upright. And in this video, we'll just have a look at uh, hub, which is also one of the very important components in a Formula student car, and uh, uh, we look at the uh, various loading scenarios on which uh, you have to analyze your hub uh, to assess its safety and reliability for the operation. So I have just made a basic design of the hub. Uh, it's not very dimensionally accurate to uh, you know to any particular uh, tire that is normally recommended for from the student. So on a student or Baha or you know, you know whatever competition you are preparing for but it's just a basic design and the material that I'll be applying for the static analysis of this is uh, alloy steel as you can look over here now one of the most important things that I would like to discuss over here is the constraints and the load uh, that I'll be applying on this hub and if you have uh, seen the video on upright analysis, then I have discussed in detail, uh, you know, on on the load application point uh, for the wheel components, because you'll have to understand this that uh, all the load, whether it will be lateral load or longitudinal or vertical load, it is all acting uh, from the point of contact of the tire on the ground. So. If you want to simulate uh, uh, your uh, loading scenario very accurately, uh, then it will be better that you apply your loads at exactly the same point of contact. And uh, the best way to do that is by putting a remote load um, on your hub, and this remote load will be acting from the point where your tire, tire actually contacts the ground. So it's this point over here. Now uh, if you just right click on the remote load and go to edit definition then you'll find that there are so many parameters that I have to select for applying remote load. Now you can see over here is the location and the location is so if I consider 300 mm die or tire then the point of contact between the uh, tire and the ground is located at a distance of 150 mm from the center. So I have selected that location. And now let us look at the loads that I've applied over here. Now, just to simulate a worst case scenario, I have assumed that all the load, the entire load of the vehicle is going through a single hub. Now, suppose if I, I imagine a hypothetical situation where uh, I have a complete longitudinal load transfer and a complete lateral load transfer so that I have the all, all the load of my vehicle acting for one hub my vehicle is weighing around 400 kilograms then all of that load is going through a single hub and uh, if I if I you know apply a 2g force a 2g lateral force then I'll be ending up applying an 8000 newton lateral force to my hub and uh, similarly if I apply a 2g longitudinal force then I'll be applying an 8000 newton longitudinal force on my hub and then a vertical load of 3g will make it 12000 newton so these are the loads that I have applied on this hub and the point where I have applied these loads is actually the stud holes that you will find in this hub studs are the, actually the um, point of contact between your tire and the hub so all the load will be passing through these studs the stud holes that you're seeing over here. So I have applied all these loads on the stud holes. Uh, now we have to look at the constraints. Now it is constrained at the point where it is resting on the bearings. So this is the surface on which uh, uh, the hub is mounted onto the upright through the bearings. So uh, these are the points which are actually constrained in this analysis. Okay. So now uh, we can see that the load and the constraint have been applied and uh, if we go out and select mesh 
I've already collect, uh, conducted an FEA, so there's already some data. I'll do it again. So I've clicked on mesh, and you can see that the component has been meshed. Okay. And now let us click on run to see the results. Right. So as you can see, that uh, from this legend over here, it appears to be safe because the one mice stress is the maximum stress is much below the yield strength value. And if you look at the factor of safety curve, we will see that we have a factor of safety of 1.68, which is pretty good considering that we are imagining we are actually simulating a situation where the entire load of the vehicle is acting through one hub, and after that, we all we are we are having a factor of safety 1.68. And that too on a 2G on a 3G, uh, you know, uh, that kind of high loads. So uh, this appears to be a safe design. But uh, as we have already discussed in the in our uh, fatigue analysis of upright video, that you cannot uh, you know assume a design to be completely safe until unless you also conduct a fatigue analysis for the same. Because since it's an, uh, it is an automobile component, uh, it will be undergoing a lot of cyclic loading. And uh, you have to consider that as well before you can, you, you know, give a thumbs up to the to, to the design. Okay, so here's a, another study that I've already conducted for fatigue, but uh, I'll repeat it once so that you know we can uh, have a look at the, all the parameters that we'll have to uh, look at for the fatigue analysis and. First of all, we have to apply a fatigue uh, SN curve data, which is over here available over here. Okay, right. And now the event is already uh, it has been uh, selected. It's the study one, the static analysis that we have conducted. And now let's run the analysis. Right, so the analysis has uh, been executed and let us look at the life plot. Now you can see minimum life over here is 3308 cycles. Now that appears to be low. But uh, you also have to see that uh, for such a loading scenario where you are assuming the entire load of the vehicle passing through one upright for passing through one hub and also the fact that you are applying all the orthogonal loads the lateral longitudinal and vertical load at the same time this is a situation this is a scenario which may never happen uh, or, you know during the life cycle of this hub but still your hub can take it for 3308 times now you know that's just a way to interpret it but uh, the the actual uh, a uh, piece of information that I would like to share over here is if you are conducting a fatigue analysis then you don't have to analyze for all those high uh, you know the, the exaggerated load values that you have done your static analysis for because otherwise you know you'll be ending up if you if suppose if I keep on improving my design to get something in the range of 10 to the power 6 over here I'll be ending up with a very heavy component and uh, you know if I really uh, give it a thought then I'll find out that I don't need such a component because this kind of loading is something which I'll never experience. For a static analysis it is okay because you know maybe in a worst case scenario I may be having even the probability of that is also very less but I may be having once or twice that kind of load. But of course I don't want to design a component which can take that kind of a load for around uh, 10 to power 7, 10 to power 8 cycles and especially not a racing component of course. So what I can do over here is I can reduce these loads for fatigue analysis. So let's, uh, let's assume that somewhere around 1500 Newton fifteen hundred Newton and fifteen hundred Newton. So I have uh, uh, given the values of 1500 Newton to all the three loads, the lateral longitudinal and uh, the vertical load, and I'll, uh, you know, con uh, do the static analysis again so that I have a new set of results. So I have new results over here, and as you can see, the that uh, the stress values are quite less over here, and which is okay. 
and because specifically we are doing the static analysis for a fatigue uh, analysis uh, results so if you conduct this fatigue analysis over here again then you'll see that you you're getting a 10 to power 6 cycles over here which is quite okay now the thing is that uh, some people may have this doubt that 10 to power why why is it not showing anything beyond 10 to power 6 so i think it's it's not showing that because the SN curve data that is available over here is only available till 10 to the power of 6. So that's the maximum that can show. Okay. So maybe uh, the total life cycle of this swamp node is way beyond that, but this is the value that it can show. It cannot go beyond this. So I think we have a safe component over here as far as the fatigue life of the component is concerned. And uh, that will be all for the static analysis and the fatigue analysis of this hub for a student competition car application so if you would uh, like some more similar videos from us on any other topic that uh, you know you, you find that you know, we may help you out with so please write to us and uh, please subscribe to our youtube channel and also please uh, you know if you have any queries please post your comments in this on this video so that we can help you out thank you very much